You're watching VTV. And in the remote outer reaches of the universe, past civilization as we know it, is a galactic system called the Milky Way. Now this minor galaxy contains in its backwoods area a rather piddling um, star uh, known as the Sun, with a really pitiful array of planets. So much for our lesson in space geography. And I hope you all took notes. There'll be a test first thing in the century. Now then. Where is he? Well, speak up. Where is Kreton? During recess, I saw him kick the ball over cloud nine. On purpose. Well, but he said he'd be right back, Mr. Delton. Yes, he'd better be. I wonder if he's headed there again? Oh, no. <laughs> That's Creton, all right. Goofiest driver in the whole school. Creton? Uh-uh. Mustn't touch. <laughs> Let's go, Buster. Back here where you belong. It's him. It's he. All right, young man. I know you're there. Come out. Why don't you come in? Because I'm the teacher and I said come out. Well, uh, I didn't mean any harm, Mr. Delton. See, Mr. Delton, I found my ball. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, no, you don't. Young man, you and I are going to have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. Back to your seats, all of you. Not you. Now then, you know perfectly well you've been forbidden to visit that odious little planetoid in solar system. Well, Mr. Delton, the Earth isn't a planetoid. It's a full-grown planet. It has six continents, five oceans, two moons. One moon. One moon? Well, anyhow, it's my hobby. See, and, well, as I calculate it, right now down there, they're having a very interesting period, the Civil War. Well, gee whiz, Mr. Delton, every guy should have a hobby. Not in your case. Remember Mars, your last hobby? We should never have let you set foot on the place. Bare, barren, desolate. Nobody goes there anymore. No. Say, maybe if they put in gambling, you know what Nothing you... would help. Thanks to your thoughtlessness, Mars is a dead planet. What good is it? Well, you... Now, have... Creton, I want you to write, I will not visit the Earth ten billion times. Stay after school a bit if necessary. But, Mr. Delton, I got a date with the fellas to go space skiing. I got wax on my feet and everything. Ten billion times. Ten billion. Well... Did he say ten billion times or ten million times? What's the difference? I'll start with the first time. 
I will not visit the He's gone again. Boy, is he in for it. You mean, is the Earth in for it? It is. It is one of them. It is. It is. Hi, Mr. Mayberry. Just picked up my costume for your party tonight. What are you going as? General Lee, same as every year. What are you looking at? A flying saucer. A what? Didn't you see it? Well, no, sir. This is the real thing, Conrad. Look for yourself. Do you see it? Do you see it? Now, Mr. Mayberry, there ain't nothing up there except a little old cloud. Oh, give me those. A little old cloud, nothing. There she is going round and round and round. Can I have another look? Just as plain as day. Well? I'm looking. What is your considered opinion, Conrad? You won't get mad. Well, of course I won't. Well, Mr. Mayberry, my considered opinion is you ought to see an eye doctor. You got astigmatism. Eye doctor? Well, I got to get over the spellings. I got to drop these flowers off for Ellen. Astigmatism. To where to your party tonight? Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. It's wiggling like a hula hoop. George, I fully realize that you are vice president in charge of programming, but I will not pull my punches. The American public has faith in Roger Putnam Spelding, and I intend to expose this flying saucer scare once and for all on my telecast tonight. Hello? Hello? Reba, will you please get off the telephone? I am talking to New York. I'm sorry, dear. I was calling the Mayberries. Do you think they'll need more mint for the juleps? Reba, please. I'm talking to George Abercrombie. Really? Oh, hello, George. And goodbye. <laughs> Evening, Conrad. Evening, Miss Bowen. Not dressed yet for the party? There's plenty of time, Mrs. Spelling. Oh, darling, there's some terrible force just keeps driving me on and on and on. Will you just restrain that terrible force because I'm getting prickly heat again? Don't forget to dress for the party, Conrad. Honey, let's get married. Right now. Conrad, as you may have suspected, I find you sexually attractive. But you just don't have any money. Well, I don't happen to believe in money. Ellen? No marriage till we finish college and get our degree. Oh, I don't know. Maybe marriage is all I'm fit for. Breeding. Out in the fields, and then an hour later, back to the plow. Carrying my newborn child on my back. Ellen! If you're going to talk that way, go someplace where smart talk's appreciated. Go to a bar or, or to a bus station. I sometimes wonder if all that cod liver oil wasn't a mistake. Children were stuffed with it. And now look at them. I'd like a big family. So would I. Let's start right now. Conrad. We'll get married. And then our weekend at the lake. All I am saying, George, is that it's high time the American public grew up. How does it look, dear? George, I am not calling all of the American public boobs, only the boobs that believe this drivel. I'll admit it's a bit daring, but after all, Scarlet was a hussy. Reba, for heaven's sake. Hurry or we'll be late for the party. Shh. Red? I am going as Jefferson Davis. Now, that's final, George. My program goes on the air exactly as we taped it this morning. Goodbye. Censorship. The curse of the intelligent man. And what are you doing? 
He's just giving me a hand, Daddy. He certainly is. Get it out of there. Her zipper's stuck, Mr. Spalding. No man has the right to zip a girl until they're engaged. Oh, I'm sure we can trust Conrad. He's very mechanical. Hey, Mr. Spalding, what do you think about these UFO reports? Poppycock. Mr. Mayberry doesn't think so. He swears he saw an unidentified flying object heading toward Richmond a little while ago. Bob Mayberry saw the Richmond plane heading toward Richmond. Mass hysteria, that's what it is. I am laying it on the line tonight with the American public. You could be wrong, dear. Spacemen. There ain't no such animal. That's the phrase I'm hitting him with on my telecast. Remember that scoop you had about Elvis? You said he was going into the Navy. Why don't you go home and get dressed? Yes, sir. Ouch! I'll be back soon, Ellen. All right, dear. <laughs> Some mechanic. The flying saucer over Richmond. Now I've heard everything. There ain't no such animal. I wonder if you could help me. Am I anywhere near, uh... Oh, I guess he hasn't learned to read yet. Hungry? Reba, when are you going to feed this dog? He is. He's trying to tell me he's hungry. You see, he's not hungry at all. <laughs> now, where'd he ever learn that trick? I don't know. Someone at the side door. I'll get it, dear. Well, Reba, it's almost seven. Do you mind turning on the TV set in the living room? Of course, dear. Any particular channel? My channel. I want to watch me. Nobody else in this house does. Madam, my name is Quiton, and my respects to General Lee. I should like to see him instantly. General Lee? Oh, you mean Bob Mayberry down the road. That's where the party is. But I'm here for the battle. Oh, I don't think it'll be a brawl. Although last year. <laughs> well, we'll be leaving in a few minutes. Why don't you just drive over with us, Mr. Crouton? Uh, that's Crouton. And thank you very much. TV's not warmed up yet? Just turning it on, dear. My husband's television program. He's very popular, they tell me. Oh, really? Oh, Mr. Creton. Yes? Do sit down and watch. Well, television in 1861. That's funny. I thought it came much later. Smoke if you'd like to. Thank you. Then stop, whatever you're doing. Yes, stop and reflect a moment. Are you a thinking man? Yeah, I think I'm a thinking man. Why not review your smoking habits? Wait, I'm busy thinking. Do it now. Yes, sir. But first, relax. Get comfortable. You mind if I sit down? Sit down. Thank you. You're very kind. 
Albert, before you light up. Oh, I'm sorry. Inspect the filter at the end of your smoke. Look inside. Look closely. Oh. What do you see? Tobacco? What would you see? Inspect the tobacco. Try a crumble test. A crumble test? Rub the tobacco between your hands. Now, whiff it. Wait, I'm still busy crumbling. Whiff it! Oh, yes, sir. Does it have that fresh, deep-down aroma? <laughs> Makes you stop and think, doesn't it? It made me stop and sneeze. So, men, just throw that old smoke of yours away and try one of these. Put it between your lips. Close your eyes. Now, light up. Yes, light up and live. Light up and live? Man, I'm going to be burned to death. You damn Yankee. His name is Creton. Why can't he walk over there? Who is he, anyway? Some friend of the Mayberries. A nice young man. No. Oh, confound it. I'm missing me. This dog has gone nuts. Now scoot. Jump. No. For several years now, certain lunatic elements have proclaimed the existence of flying saucers. I should like to nail the subject down once and for all. There ain't no such animal. There is no life on other planets capable of building spaceships. And to interject a purely American note, no country in the world but ours has the industrial know-how to build such a ship. Right. Let me show you some recent photographs of objects purported to be spaceships. My President Jefferson Davis, of all people, I can't tell you how glad I am to meet you. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, sir. For what? Number two. Your, your left sideburn, sir, they shot it off. Number three. Quiet. I'm sorry. I'm trying to listen. Oh, I'll listen also, sir. And number four. Optical illusions, every one of them. Mass hysteria. That's telling them, eh, boy? So uh, yes, sir. Yourselves, my friend. It's too bad he's full of hooey. <laughs> hooey? I'm not calling you oh, well, I believe that's the expression, friends. sir. Or is it, uh, uh goofer dust? No! Hooey, that's it. He, he's full of hooey. <laughs> There's no need for alarm. No need at all. We shall return to Roger Putnam Spelding in a moment. But first, have you inspected your filter lately? Smoke superbo. Superb tobacco, superbly blended, a superb filter. Mr. Yes. President, don't you listen to him. He'll burn your whiskers off. Go, oh, stop! I mean it, sir. He did a job on me, burnt my head and my face. You think I'm full of hooey, eh? Oh, no, sir. I didn't say that you were full of hooey. I said that the... Well, you're not Jefferson Davis. You're, you're him, that man on TV, that Roger Pellman Sputton. Spelding. I know who I am. The question is, who are you? Uh-uh. No, sir. The question is, when am I? When are you? Well, what I mean to say is, what year is this? 1960. 1960? I'm 99 years off. What year did you have in mind? Well, 1861. You see, I was on my way to the Civil War, and something went wrong with the machine or my calculations. I don't know which, but I landed here 99 years out of my way. But I never was very good at dates. Are you trying to pull my leg? Oh, no, sir, but, but if you'd like me to. Oh, I've been awfully rude, sir. I, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Creton. I'm from the other side. Other side of where? Uh, the other side of the universe, another planet. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, what come I'm- Come on, come on. I know a trick when I see one. Now, where's the wire that you did this with? What is this? Oh, I'm sorry. I neglected to warn you. You see, I can touch you, but 
You mustn't touch me. Do you understand? Uh, look, I'll show you. You see? Hmm? They do exist. And you're one of them. Well, you... You come from out there. That's it. Yes, indeed. But that's our little secret now, isn't it, Mr. Spelding? <laughs> that's odd. I thought I turned that motor off. Oh, I'll be spending the night here. That is, if it's convenient. <laughs> I'll be right back. Calling you boobs, my friends. I simply repeat, when it comes to visitors from outer space, there ain't no such animal. That's what you think, you stupid boob. Mr. Delton, sir. Uh, you playing hooky, too? I certainly am not. So, you've gone over the cloud again, eh? What's your excuse this time? Another missing volleyball? Oh, no, sir. Uh, no, Mr. Delton. Uh, uh, I lost my marbles. You lost your marbles long ago. Well, I I'll tell the truth, Mr. Delton. You see, the reason I played hooky and came down here is because, well, I like the Earth and I like the people on it. And, well, sir, can't I study them? Absolutely not. But it would be like homework, sir. After all, I am majoring in the planet Earth. Under no circumstance. Well, on second thought, maybe you ought to get this out of your system. It might do you a world of good. Another world, that is. Uh, you mean I can stay then, sir? For a bit. But remember, Creton, there's a wise old proverb that goes, up is down and down is up. And never the twain shall meet. Yes, I remember it. I remember it well, sir. But you must keep in mind that this visit of yours must be a secret. And don't get involved with these Earth people. You can't trust them. No, you can't trust them at all, sir. Except Mr. Spelding. He's very nice, and he wouldn't tell a soul about me. He wouldn't, eh? At this very moment, he's calling New York. Listen. I don't care if he is having dinner. This is important. I'll fix his wagon. What are you going to do, Mr. Delton? That joker's getting the old 86. Oh, no, don't disintegrate him, Mr. Delton, please. He's a very nice man, and he's going to a party later, and his wife won't have anyone to dance with. Couldn't you just throw a little old 14 at him? 14 it is. <laughs> You're very kind. Here's how I start my program tomorrow. Well, speak up, man. I have a dinner party waiting for me. How do you intend to start your broadcast? Well, we had a widow wham. Its waist was white as snow. And everywhere the mail we went. Roger, are you out of your mind? The wham was sure to go. Spelling, you're drunk. Study these earthlings, but don't get involved. No, I won't. Don't you worry, Mr. Dalton. And thank you very much. And uh, uh, I'll be a good boy, Mr. Dalton. Have a good trip. So long. What happened? Well, you were snitching, so you got a 14. You could have gotten an 86. What's an 86? Come, I'll show you. Well? Watch that plant. That's an 86. You'll like him. He's really a very nice young man. Oh, Mr. Creton. Yes. This is my daughter, Ellen. Hello. Oh, 36. 24. And 36. That's better. Yeah, much better. Pardon? Oh, I mean, th this bend. What? Oh, 
Well, what I mean to say is it does something for girls. You see, where I come from, the girls are 36 straight, and that's it. But this, <laughs> it breaks up the monotony. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He is cute, Mother. I was right! I was right! I was right! I Oh, uh, good evening, Helen. Uh, Reba, I just received a flash from headquarters on the flying saucers. It's confirmed, Roger. Why, I even saw one with my own eyes as plain as day. There were machine guns sticking out of the side. And underneath it had a rack of bombs. And a tremendous cannon poking out of a pillbox on the top. How, how, yeah. how? How do you do? How do you do? Have we met? Uh, not unless you've ever been to X-47. Well... Oh, this hmm? is Mr. Mayberry. He's host at the party tonight. Uh, oh. Nice costume. <laughs> right costume, wrong century. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get this, Rog. Get this. At 1800 this evening, an unidentified flying object was spotted high over the oh, Manhattan. Bob, you shouldn't read that in front of Roger. Remember, there ain't no such animal. No such animal as what, Mother? As visitors from beyond. Teensy weensy little men with long green feelers like this. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Spelding, but the long green feelers went out with the short red tails. <laughs> Short red tails. <laughs> Stop, Reba, for heaven's sake. Short red tail. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Yes, yes, indeed. You put fingerprints all over it. I mean, I don't care for me personally. But we are supposed to keep it clean. You know, sloppy barrier, sloppy mind. <laughs> You know what's going on, Raj. Tell us. I can't. I have to watch out for that old 86. 86? Look what happened to the azalea plant. It's withered. That's what I mean. Can I tell them, please? Well, as long as I am going to be a guest in your house, I, I suppose it'll be all right. But remember now, this is our little secret. You see... I'm from another world. <clears throat> from another... Planet! It's true! Jupiter? Jupiter? No one lives on Jupiter. Well, at least no one I know. Why did you come here? Oh, I guess it was a combined pleasure and study trip. You know, a visit to your small planet from mine. Eight million light years away. Eight million? Imagine! Poor boy, you must be exhausted. I am, as a matter of fact, a little pooped right now. A good night's sleep will take care of that. I'll fix up the guest room. Oh, well, thank you very much. What is he supposed to be? A uh, spaceman. At least that's what I would have said ten minutes ago. Ain't I something? Ex excuse me, please. Uh, how do you do? Uh, I wonder, do you mind? Go ahead. Thank you. You know, I'm sick and tired of going to this old blow all over your address as Stonewall Jackson. This year I'm going as a sure enough spaceman. Boom, boom! Uh, oh, you don't need that to boom, boom. Uh, may I? Sure. Mr. Spelling, who is that? That, you boob, is a spaceman. A spaceman? <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> Will you please sit down and shut up? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Spelling. Get this thing off me! Get it off? Yeah, yes, I will. Uh, just a second. Oops. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Spelding. I guess I aim just a little too high. Uh, if you just take your hands down and relax. Just hold perfectly still. <laughs> There we are. <laughs> See, Mr. 
Mrs. Belding? I can, but you can't. Well, sure enough, ever-loving, cotton-picking spaceman. Here you are, Mr. Spelding. I, I hope that I didn't upset... Guest room's ready. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Spelding. I hope I didn't put you out. Oh, and you'll find uh, some of Mr. Spelding's clothes in the closet. Feel free to wear them. My clothes? Are you radioactive? Oh, you needn't worry about that, sir. I've had my shots. Well, enjoy yourselves, everybody. I'm going to Betty Bye. Good night. Uh, you forgot your bag, Creton. Oh, so I did. Thank you. He and thank you. <laughs> Bob? Where are you going? I know my duty when I see it. I'm reporting this to state militia. I wouldn't do that. He wants it kept secret. Secret? Oh, oh, of course, of course. Well, you can trust me, Raj. Won't tell a soul. Conrad? I won't tell a soul either, Mr. Spalding. You're darn right you won't. You think I'd let a blabbermouth like you get me in trouble? You are not leaving this house tonight. You are sleeping here. In my room? I'm sorry, Mr. Spalding, I just can't. I mean, well, I'm not gonna leave Myrtle alone at my place all night. Myrtle? His goat, Daddy, remember? Oh, yeah. Myrtle hasn't been a bit well, Mr. Spalding. She looks very peaked. And for the last couple of days, she's been running a temperature. Well, she can run it over here. Put Myrtle in our barn. Is it air-conditioned? Get going. Yes, sir, I'll do that. What about the party, Daddy? We are not going to the party. So glad you could... Oh, good evening, good evening. Mabel, Mabel, get them into the living room. What? Get them into the living room, please. Hurry, dear, hurry. Well, uh, will you all please go into the living room and enjoy yourself? I'll be there in just a moment. And have fun. Robert, what in the world? Please don't ask any questions, Mabel. This is the biggest thing that ever happened to Manassas, to the country. Uh, Captain Jackson, Mabry of Manassas, listen carefully. This is top, top secret. At precisely 7.45 tonight, Mary had a widow wham. Mustn't do that, Mr. Mayberry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, hiya, Rags. Come on in. Come on. There's no reason why we can't be friends, Rags. Now, what's on your mind? Come on, out with it. Oh, I forgot. I don't believe it. There ain't no such human. You've been spending too much time with Mr. Spelding. I'm perfectly normal. Ra Rags, where do you sleep at night? Me? in a lousy box on the back porch. They think I'm a watchdog, but I'm really not. I'm yellow. So am I. Rags, I have a thought. Why don't you bunk here with me tonight? With you? Well, sure, why not? You take the lower. Normal, he says. Good morning, Creton. Oh, good morning, Ellen. You look very pretty this morning. Thank you. Well, how do you like it? Uh, your first day on Earth, I mean. Oh, oh, that. It's just wonderful. I like it a lot, except that it's not exactly what I thought it would be. Why? What did you imagine? Well, I, I'm a little disappointed. You know, I missed the Civil War and Gettysburg and Shiloh and Manassas. You keep talking about the past. Are you from the future? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can visit you at any moment in your history. You know, time is really a trapezoid. You, you know what that means, don't you? No, I'm afraid I don't. You don't know what a trapezoid is? <laughs> well, I don't either, actually. That's the trouble with school, you see, that they make you memorize things that you're never, ever going to use. <laughs> <laughs> Creton, what's it like?
back in space. Oh, it's pretty nice. Especially if you're traveling out of season. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, trouble. Trouble? Your daddy's in the study, and he's waiting for a call from George Abercrombie in New York. And is he worried? You mean you can tell what daddy's thinking? Uh-huh. Would you like to listen in? George Abercrombie, big shot executive, thinks he has brains. Well, I've got news for him. His brains aren't in his head, they're in his... Oh! <clears throat> you have to be awfully careful of thoughts. <laughs> like, for instance, your thoughts, right now. I haven't a thing on my mind. Except Conrad. The truth, Ellen? Poor Conrad. Sleeping with Daddy. And if Daddy knew what he was planning for this weekend at the lake, he'd strangle him in his sleep. No chaperones. I'm frightened. No, I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to... He's inside. Creton's inside my mind. Creton, stop that! Well, Ellen, wait, wait a minute. I mean, uh, well, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Well, now you know. Oh, Creton, the whole thing is so mixed up. Well, let's unmix it. First, how does Conrad feel about your father? I'm afraid he doesn't like Daddy very much. And what does your father think about Conrad? despises him. Well, then the first thing we have to do is to change the sleeping arrangements because last night certainly wasn't satisfactory at all. Now, there are three bedrooms and I'm in one. Now, let's put Mr. and Mrs. Spelding in bedroom A together. Now, you and Conrad... Yes, this is going to work out just fine, Ellen. You and Conrad can take over bedroom B. But Conrad and I aren't married. Well, I didn't mean any harm by it, Ellen. You have to understand that... Well, you see, where I come from, we don't tangle. You don't... Tangle? Oh, no, we haven't done that for a long time. Well, if you don't tangle, what do you do? I mean, how do you multiply? Multiply what? Each other. How do you have babies? Oh, we don't. I don't understand. Well, let me explain, Ellen. You see, we have ourselves. And, well, since we're for real forever, well, there's enough of us. Do you understand? So now you never tangle. No, never. It's a lost art. Although I must admit we were a little hasty, I think. But anyway, you must promise me that you'll let me watch next time you and Conrad oscillate antennas. Oscillate antennas? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's what they call it on Venus. But down here, I believe they refer to it as um, pitching woo. May I watch? Well, Ellen, what did I say now? That's really the one thing I want to see while I'm down here. Creton, you've got to stop talking like that. I know you're from another planet and all, and I guess we do think an awful lot about sex down here, but we're not supposed to discuss it. And anyway, it only happens when nobody's looking. Morning, Conrad. Did you sleep well? I was up all night. El Ellen, your father grinds his teeth. It's just gruesome. <laughs> He's been listening to my mind. Huh? I know all about the weekend at the lake. No chaperone? <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> How'd he find out? I just told you. I was thinking about you, and Cretan saw it in my mind. Well, guess who I'm thinking about right this minute, Peach Blossom. So that's how you Earthlings mm. do it, huh? Very interesting. Mm. Very interesting indeed. Well... I'm pretty well straightened away, except for just one little detail, a teensy-weensy thing I'm still not too sure of. Uh, which one has the baby? Creton! Uh, Conrad, uh, go get the car. We'll be late for class. Oh, in a minute. I gotta go out to the barn, give Myrtle her breakfast. I'll take her a cornflake box. I'll pick you up in a few minutes, honey child. Cornflake box? This seems much more nourishing. I do believe he thinks more of that goat than he does of me. What a weekend. I can just see her gorgeous figure in that bathing suit. Wow, we. Well, you're the one, all right. Nobody ever whistled at a goat in a bathing suit. Except another goat, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There you are. If you're not busy, Mr. Creton, my husband would like to see you in the study. Oh, gladly. <laughs> what are you laughing at, dear? Conrad's goat in a bathing suit. 
Oh, did he buy her a bathing suit? I didn't know she could swim. Why don't you hang a red light on that thing? It's a menace to navigation. Good morning, my boy. Oh, good morning, sir. I need your advice. Now, I just spoke to New York and... I know. You spoke to George Abercrombie. And he's on his way here. He's arriving on the 11 o'clock plane. But how did you... Oh, you know what I'm thinking. Uh-huh. And right now, you're pretty worried, aren't you? Of course I'm worried. That fellow's my boss. Hires and fires. Fires and hires all day long. Now, why did I do that? I never drink before breakfast. A drink what? What is that? Bourbon. Bourbon? May I try? I'm afraid you're a little young, my boy. Young? Here's my driver's license, see? I'm over 21. 21 million light years? Yeah, you should have seen my birthday cake with all the candles. <laughs> Burned it to a crisp. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd be careful on an empty stomach. Oh, really? Well, then this should be a lot of fun. Mr. Delton, are you going to let him try that stuff? I am, indeed. It'll teach him a lesson. Give that lad enough cloud and he'll hang himself. Good, <laughs> good. <laughs> Hi! Cloud! Powerful stuff. Thank you very much. Now, now, you can talk later. Time for breakfast. Ellen and Connor are going to drive Mr. Creton into town with them. Do you like your bacon crisp, Mr. Creton? Yes, that'll be fine. Good. You really shouldn't be up there, you know. You'll get footprints all over the ceiling. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, you can make my eggs sunny side down. Now that's silly. Now I know what they mean by being high. Let's have another one. <laughs> I'm beginning to understand how you do things here on Earth. When Conrad tickles your ear, that makes the motor go, right? Conrad tickling my ear has nothing to do with the motor. It has to do with your motor? <laughs> you ought to try it sometime. Love. It's wonderful. Oh, well, we gave that up ages ago. It took us darn near forever to stamp out disease. Scarlet fever, mumps, anxiety, the common cold, and finally, that great killer, passion. You gave up passion? Oh, yeah, we don't feel anything. We don't do anything. But In, inside was sort of like cold spaghetti, you know? Sounds terribly dull. Uh, well, it is, a little. Uh, you go right ahead, Conrad. Don't mind me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was watching. Unless we get moving pretty soon, we're going to be late. simple. I just thought him into the air. The next policeman is yours. Oh, may I? Sure. Say, this is fun. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> oh, is this one mine? Be my guest. Oh, no. What do I do? Well, just focus all your thoughts on that policeman. Ellen, please. Conrad, watch this. Nothing happened. That's because you're not concentrating, Ellen. Now concentrate. Lift the cop. Lift the cop. Conrad, I did it! He moved! He really moved! That was wonderful. 
that one. Tomorrow I'll teach you to lift buildings. Isn't this fun? Hey! Will you kindly stop flirting with my girl? Well, I didn't mean any harm, Conrad. Uh, inside, cold spaghetti, remember? Cold spaghetti nothing. You've got a hot, chilly look in your eye. <laughs> Now look, look, here he comes. We'll probably wind up in jail. Oh, we can't do that. It would spoil our whole day. Uh, watch him. I'll give him an eight the easy way. <laughs> You know your way back home, don't you, fella? Well, I found my way to the earth, didn't I? <laughs> well, that's a lot easier than finding your way out of a turnpike. Oh. Well, thanks for the car, Conrad. I'll be careful. These turnpikes are murder, ain't they, bud? Oh, they're not so bad. Just follow me. Flash! Ladies and gentlemen, the most remarkable event in the history of Virginia has just occurred in Manassas. At exactly 9.37 a.m. at the Richmond Interchange. Man, we had a whittle wham. Its face was white as snow. And everywhere that man we went, the lamb was sure to go. Hi, Clementine. Now, what's this all about? Every day, the same old routine, and I'm getting pretty tired of it. Here he comes, the terror of Manassas. Oh. Here, here. Now, neighbors should be friends. Now, I want you two to shake hands. I positively refuse. Right in the eye. You call her a lady? All right, now, stop this bickering. And I'm not leaving here until you two kiss and make up. I won't kiss him, but he can kiss me. There. Now, that wasn't so terrible, was it? Dames, she really loves it. I have been the mainstay of the network these many years, and you know it. Mrs. Felding. Shh. Eavesdropping. Roger's been in there listening to Mr. Abercrombie for almost an hour. I don't like that Abercrombie. I'm sure Roger's going to lose his job. Don't you worry about that, Mrs. Spelding. We're fraternity brothers. You've made a few mistakes too many, old man. George, if you're saying... I'm saying that viewer-wise, sponsor-wise, information-wise, you, Spelding, are low man on the totem pole. The flag is down, the lifeboats are gone, and the ship is sinking. And I'm the captain. But not for long. You're going down for the third time. Who's this joker? Cretan? Oh, he's a visitor here. <laughs> Last night, about 7 o'clock. There we had a widow where its fleece was white as spelding. Are you in your second childhood? Yes, sir. There's no other explanation. Abercrombie, I've been looking forward to meeting you for a long time. You've always been A1 on my ship ever since the lifeboat went up the totem pole. <laughs> I beg your pardon. What I mean to say, man, is you're the talk of Madison Avenue. Oh. Oh, well, aren't you exaggerating a trifle? Not a bit. How about that humdinger of a deal you pulled on B, B, D, D, J, J, and W, huh? <laughs> you really gave him the old stab in the back, <laughs> knife-wise, huh? <laughs> I really pulled a fast one there, didn't I? <laughs> Wait a minute. Nobody knew about the B, B, D, D, J, J, and W deal, not even W. How did you find out? Well, don't tell me. From my wife. No! 
Eloise? Shh! Nobody knows about Eloise. Not even your wife. Are you sure? I'm sure. He's oh. sure. Oh, good. Good. You see, when, when a man has a wife like mine and an Eloise like Eloise, well, he can, he can get in an awful mess. Would you pardon me? I want to get some more ice. Sure. What's he thinking about? Am I going to lose my job? Very important to get rid of Spelding. I'm sunk. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, uh, Spelding, I suggest we let this simmer in the pot for a while. And uh, about that B, B, D, D, J, J, and W business, and uh, oh, <laughs> uh, Eloise, uh, this is strictly on for you, of course. Oh, of course. I won't say a word. No, not as long as you still have your job, eh, Mr. Spelding? <laughs> oh, I get it. Blackmail. Oh, it's, it's not bad, <laughs> blackmail. No, I, I use it all the time myself. You've got quite a future in the advertising game, young man. Cheerio. Goodbye, George. Oh, oh goodbye, Reba. Remember me to your charming wife. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Ah, uh, thanks, my boy. Hey, <laughs> you saved my neck. Well, I don't like him. How'd everything go, dear? Oh, fine, just fine. Thanks to our young friend here. He really straightened old George out. <laughs> Glad to have been of service, sir. <laughs> What a great son-in-law he'd make. You mean instead of Conrad? I certainly do. Well, I don't know. Sputniks for grandchildren. But I don't think parents should interfere. Mine didn't, or I wouldn't be Mrs. Roger Putnam Spelding, my dear. <laughs> Conrad, hmm? you know what I think we ought to do tonight? Get married? No, silly. I think we should take Creton to the Hungry Brain. He might enjoy it. Well, I wouldn't enjoy it. Not with him. Well, you're jealous. I can't help it. Baby, don't marry me. Darling, I can't. Daddy would be furious. If your daddy thought it would get me out of his bedroom tonight, he'd forge the wedding license. Darling, I just can't marry you. You're sweet. But maybe what I really want, what I really need is... Someone who dragged me around by the hair. Oh, you started. Good. Oh, don't mind me. I won't make a sound. I'll just sit back here and take notes. You go right ahead. Creton, we went all through that this morning. It's not polite to snoop on people. That's right, mister. Well, I didn't mean any harm. I'm sorry. Uh, Creton, Conrad and I have decided to take you out tonight. You decided. We decided. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. Well, I'm not going. Then we'll go alone. Mister, I don't approve of my girl going out with strange men. Creton is not strange. They don't come any stranger. Creton, you and I are going to the Hungry Brain tonight. Oh, wonderful. What is it? Well, it's our favorite rendezvous, and it's out of this world. Out of this world? I better dress for it. What's the matter, Ellen? You're trembling. Did I drive too fast for you? No. Just that I've never crossed the river before without using the bridge. Creton, don't you know what bridges are for? Yeah, to shade the fish. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mayberry! Thank you. <laughs> Man, now that's out. That's so out, he ain't ever been in. Well, real old 
old-fashioned music. I think this is gonna be fun. Good evening, Miss Spelling. Good evening. Right this way, please. This cat must be our new leader. Well, if he ain't, let's elect him. Crazy. He's a real kook. Hey, kook! Baby, but he sure looks cool. Welcome to the space, brother. Oh, thank you. Say, uh, that's a real crazy looking pair of jeans you have, Dad. Who laid the threads on you? Jeans? Threads? Yeah, like, like who's your tailor, baby? And where can we find him? Oh, my tailor. Well, do you know where the Milky Way is? Yeah, the... The Milky Way? Yeah, yeah, the Milky Way. Go, baby, whale. Well, you turn right at the second nebula. And it's the third planet at the end of the star cluster. You just ask for Mr. DeMilo and tell him I sent you. <laughs> Man, this cat talks off the top. He's tuned in. Tell me, double hipness, what floor do you get out of when you're split from the cloud? Oh, we don't use floors. You don't use floors? Oh, no. We use fog. It's much softer and far easier to keep clean. <laughs> Quite a group, aren't they? <laughs> oh, yes, they are. Except I'm a little curious. Ellen, tell me one thing. What are they, animal, mineral, or vegetable? They're people, silly. Beatniks. Man, what we're trying to find out is, were you planted here, or did you come in on the beam? He wants to know where you come from. Perhaps you'd rather not tell. Oh, no, I don't mind. I I I'm sure they won't say anything. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I come from X-47. I live right near that tailor I told you about, out past the Milky Way. Out past the Milky Way? Past. Oh, man, this cat's really from out of town. All right, boys, take five, huh? Hey, man, we've been watching you from the bandstand. Oh, really? Yeah, you look out enough to make it. Would you dig whaling with the group? Oh, well, thank you, but I'm not a musician. Although I think I would like to play those. The skins? Skins. The bongos, man. Uh, oh, yeah, the bongos, yeah. Well, crazy, let's make it. Like now, let's split. Well, uh, if it's all the same to you, uh, I, I think I'd like to play them from here. You want to play those from there? Well, it's quite simple, you see. Many, many different people. Ooby doobie, swilly a dow, ah, oh, ow. Ooby doobie, cow. Ooby 
Dippy doo bee dwilly a bop. Diddy boo, ooh ya coo, mop mop. Flute it, flute it, city a dwee. This, this is a very sad story. You see, it's all about a girl who fell in love with a no good ratnik. And it's very touching, actually. Bloody ooh dwee, ah ah. Diddly a boo and flop a doo boo ree ba boo. She left out the best part. What part did she leave out? The part where her father makes so I she didn't know he's a kid at that. Now, come on. I got all choked up when I. Uh, uh, oh, I think. Uh, oh. Mind if I borrow your man? Uh, no, I won't. Life's a drag, Daddy O. Let's make it. Oh, well, thank you, but I'm with her. No, Daddy, you're with it. Oh. Come on, honey. Buzz over to my hive. Just watch my hand closely. No, you're watching too hard. Hard. Just cool it, man. Cool it. Cool it. Yeah. There we go. Crazy.
one should see me now. <laughs> I can, young man. I see you very well. <laughs> Cretan, you were just wonderful. Oh, it wasn't anything. You know, sometimes you do things and you're not really aware of what's going on because you just do it. Ellen, what are you doing under the table? I've had this it. This is ridiculous. Shave my beard and call me normal. Let's go. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Well, don't be, no, I don't be scared. Oh, you're I didn't, wait a minute, I own. Oh. Cretan, will you come down from there? I'm sorry, Ellen. I guess Mr. Delton saw more than I figured. Say, what are those cars doing over there? That's Inspiration Point. Don't they have a lover's lane where you come from? Oh, no, we gave that up a long time ago, along with Mahjong and community singing. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go over and park for a while? Yeah, that might be interesting. It seems pretty dull to me. They're just sitting there and they're not even talking. The reason they're not talking is because they're cuddling. Look at that gorgeous moon. Doesn't the moon mean anything to you? Of course. Last stop for gas before Mars. <laughs> but the moon, Creton, spells romance. That boy and that girl, they're kissing. The moon did that. Well, now, is kissing really fun? Why don't you try it and find out? That's a splendid idea. I'll run over and I'll ask her. Preton, there's no need to make such a long trip. Stay here. I believe I will try it. It is sanitary, but it isn't as much fun. I better get rid of that old barrier. <laughs> You know something? We're gonna do that again. That's what he thinks. Tom, this will never do. There simply isn't any oomph. Oh, on the contrary, I felt a definite ping in my left vertebrae. L let's have another whirl at it. Right. Oh, boy. Another ping? And a pong and a wing ding dong. Mm -hmm. I melted it. I melted it. It's the real thing. I'm in love. Exactly as I anticipated. He's become an oh, earthling. Oh, what a wonderful feeling, Ellen. He asked for it, and I'm afraid he's going to get it. Oh, Mary. What was that? I must have blown a fuse. <laughs> Ellen, do you know why? It's I... all my fault. I, I should never have let you kiss me. Well, Ellen, don't worry. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to ask your father for your hand in marriage. Marriage? For my hand in... Creton, do you realize what you're saying? Well, of course I realize, Ellen. <laughs> and all the time you thought I was a cad. Well, coming up? No, I think I'll go get some hot milk. Or some cold milk, or... Or something. I'll see you in the morning, Creton. Uh, happy, Ellen? Well, not exactly happy. I'm more... More ecstatic. Yeah, me too. I'm floating on air. <laughs> I heard that outer space carpetbagger. You're not gonna marry him, are you? Of course not, darling. I just don't want to hurt his feelings. What about my feelings? I'm human, too. 
What do I mean to? He's not human. Lord knows what he is. Well, whatever he is, Creton is kind and sweet and nice. Oh, Conrad, what am I going to do? You're going to marry me. That's what you're going to do. We're going to elope. Oh, Conrad. Just as soon as I finish this sandwich. for each other. It's really true love. I know Ellen and I are from different worlds, but that shouldn't be an obstacle. Personally, I don't believe in mixed marriages. Look at me. Why? You look just fine. Fine? My mother was a Mexican chihuahua and my father a Labrador retriever. How'd you like to walk around with a warm nose and a cold tail? Oh, Rags, good night. Oh, that poor earthling Conrad. He thinks he's going to elope with Ellen. <laughs> but I know better. That's what he thinks. <laughs> and you know what's funny, Rags? Mr. Delton doesn't have the slightest idea about what's going on. <laughs> That's what he thinks. <laughs> Mr. Delton thinks that falling in love will get me into trouble. That's what he thinks. <laughs> Boy, is he wrong. That's what he thinks. Morning, dear. Mm. Young one's not down yet. Creton, Conrad, breakfast is ready. Where's Ellen? I don't know. She wasn't in bed when I woke up this morning. Neither was Conrad when I woke up. They both must have had early classes today. Oh, good morning, Mr. Spalding. Ah, uh, good morning, my boy. Well, you're in a good mood, I see. Oh, never better. Listen to this. The Amalgamated Television Network today renewed Roger Putnam Spalding's contract for another five years. That's your work, my boy. I want you to know I'm deeply grateful. Oh, well, don't mention it. Uh, Dad? Dad? Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Spalding? Yes? You see, there comes a time in every spaceman's life when he finally meets the girl of his clouds. Now, uh, you see, sir, I've put away enough glue dingles uh, not only to spoil... Roger! Mr. Piton, come quickly! This is actually uh, the point I'm uh, trying to make, oh. Mr. Spelding. Uh, you see, Mr. Spelding... Oh. Now, what is it? The most wonderful thing has happened. What happened? They're married. Conrad and Eleanor, husband and wife. Husband and wife? They did elope. You see, Dad, we... Dad! Mr. Spalding, we just had to get married. What do you mean, had to? Well, I... Well, I mean, we couldn't wait another minute now with him around, so we eloped. Eloped? You... You... You goat herder, you... Ellen! Please! I don't know Easy. why you... Yeah, think you're 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 don't get upset, Mr. Spalding. I guess the best man won. Yeah, no, wait a minute, excuse me, dear. I don't believe the children have had breakfast. Conrad, you will stay. I'll be happy to. Uh, congratulations, old man. I hope we can still be friends. You mean you don't feel that way about Ellen? Oh, she's like a sister to me. A sister, eh, Creton? Well, I'll just show them how you really what feel a nice about her. Boy he is. Ellen, oh, Ellen, you babe with that crazy build. I've been watching you shake it around this house. And you've been watching me, watching you, and it's driving me mad. Wow! Creton, what are you saying? I don't know! Someone unzip my mind! Mr. Delton, please! We don't need words, honey. Not you and me. The first time I saw you, bells rang. The earth moved. It was like there was nobody else in the world. 
Just you and me and the black burning night exploding like a thousand Roman candles. I propose, mister, that you discontinue this line of thought at once. No, no, it's fascinating, really. Oh, but Ellen, I, I, I didn't mean a word of it. Uh, that is, I, I meant it, but... What? No, I, I didn't mean to say it. You see, actually, Ellen, I'm... And your hungry eyes begging me, imploring me, and pleading with me to take you in my powerful arms. Whoa! <laughs> Ellen, look, actually, this is a whole... Mister, the woman you love happens to be my wife! Conrad, please. We're just easy, honey. Barrier, nothing. Conrad, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Bop him one. There will be no bopping. Stand still. Oh, it's stuck, Mr. Delton. Please, it won't hit. Mine won't hit. Hit me. Mine don't hit. Mine don't hit. What's the matter, you coward? That's it. Yeah. Fight. Come on. Steady. Do something. It won't hit. This don't hit. It don't hit. It's I fight if I win. Come, Red, now please. Please start it. it. Wait. Wait, 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 don't hit. What's he doing down there? I'm hanging up the phone. I hit him. You, you hit him and you aren't disintegrated? I can't understand that the boy's lost his power. Lost his power? Then I'm safe. I can do my duty. Oh, this is a day. Haven't you time for a cup of coffee, Bob? No, no, not now. Keep him cornered, Conrad. I'll get the state police right away. The National Guard, the commanding general of the area. Excuse me. Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. We'll get you up. We'll get you up out of there. Now, come on. Take oh. it. There we go. There. There, there, there. I said if yeah. he got up, I'd hit him again. Oh, now, look. Let me at him. Now, they don't call me the Manassas Smaller for nothing. Shut up. Well, I didn't mean anything. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Just wet. You see, where I come from, we don't feel pain. Oh, we feel wet. You'll feel wet water, but... You don't feel pain. Like, for instance, all these <laughs> That's what he thinks. Me. You see, I didn't even feel the slightest twinge of... Pain! What's the matter? Oh, an arm! Mr. Delton! Well, oh, you wanted to be an earthling, my boy, so take everything that goes with it. Oh, the leg. Just kick the leg. There's a pain. Oh, the back is a pain. To... Oh, this head. There's a stomach. Oh, a foot is a pain. Oh, no more pain! Will you... Merchant's using the phone. I gotta use your... Will you... Aspirin, don't let him get away! He's gonna kill me. Well... Ah! Come back and fight like a man! You fight your way, I'll fight mine! Come on, open up! Come on out and fight! I won't come out and I won't fight! Come on, open up, you coward! That's why I won't come out! I'm a coward! A spaceman, General. S P A S E. I mean C. Uh, yes, the state police are on the way now, sir. Oh, good, good. Hope you can make it, sir. Where's the gun? Oh, Conrad. There's a gun. Conrad! Deserting your post of duty? I need this in case he tries to break out. Oh, give me that. It's just a conversation piece, any. <laughs> Sure talks loud, don't it? Oh, the police! Excuse me, I'd better go make sandwiches and coffee. Well, well, come on, there's nothing to be afraid of. Let's get out there. Come on. Well, uh, after you, folks, after you. I'll stay in back so I can plan our strategy. <laughs>
he ain't. It's Myrtle. Myrtle did it. Myrtle, you come back here. Whoa! here you might get hurt i am hurt all right man clear the fire come on give him room here let's go loudspeaker all right mister we've got you covered i said we've got you covered pardon me certainly myrtle here myrtle <laughs> well, where'd you go to now you come to papa you hear give me that you haven't got a chance. Come out with your hands over your head. I said come out with your hands over your head. Sorry I took so long, dear. Reba. Ellen. No, thank you, Mother. Come out with your hands over your head. Off, sir. Egg salad or tuna fish sandwiches. Oh, please, ma'am, not now. Conrad? We mean business. If you don't come out, we'll have to use the tear gas. Tear gas, that's a good idea. Pardon me. General doesn't want us to rush the place until he gets here. He's on the way with a life photographer. You naughty spaceship! You shouldn't go away without me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here, slow down. Slow down. You're gonna get me. Oh, oh. 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 oh I'm sorry. Hello, Mr. Delton. It's your ship. Had enough, young man? Uh, oh, yes, indeed. Yes, sir, I've had it. Well, you always wanted to be an Earthling, and now you know what it's like. You felt the pain of love, the pain of jealousy. And the pain of pain, and that's the worst pain. This is a crazy mixed-up planet, Mr. Delton. I'd like to get out of here. And you'll never come back again? Never, I promise. The furthest I'll ever go is to the moon. You've learnt a good lesson, my boy. Remember, the grass is always greener on the other side of the universe. So keep your nose out of other people's planets. And from now on, I will. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Mr. Delton, I hit my place on that. Mr. Mayberry? Sir. Where's that spaceman? He... Spaceman, General? <laughs> There ain't no such animal. So long, Earth. It's been lots of... Whoa! 